with my little twiddle. <laughs> YouTube. Uh, quick video today from Chairs, that's me. If you haven't come across my videos before, there are hundreds of them, so do check out more videos be below. I'm sure it will suggest some for you. We're going to do a quick video today on how to make your sound a little bit more professional. Uh, just going to do five quick tips. This isn't all there is to it. Obviously, years of experience and practice is uh, a good attributing factor to sounding a little bit more professional, but hopefully some of these might be useful for you. I'm here with my Selma Balanced Action, so it is a really nice sax. I've got a nice mouthpiece on here, Rosso Studio Jazz. Um, if you want to know a bit more about my setup, I'll, I'll put a link above my head, because uh, obviously your setup very, very much affects the quality of sound. But um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do two examples, a little bit of pick up the pieces. I'm going to do one completely straight, no effects, no... Well, I'm going to try not to, although it's kind of a habit now. Uh, no, no fancy stuff in there. And then I'm going to play it again with a few little tricks and quirks, and hopefully you'll tell the difference. And then I'm going to point out what, what I changed. So here it is for the first time, completely straight, hopefully. <laughs> version had a bit more energy, a bit more boost, a bit more life. So let me point out a few things that gave it that. I'm going to consult my phone because I probably did more than five things, but I'm going to point out the five major things. Uh, okay, so first of all, it's all about ghost notes. Um, I'm not sure if I'm using the technically correct terms for all of these things, by the way, just as a heads up. This is what I'm going to call it, ghost notes. So they are notes that kind of disappear. So in that, that B section, whatever, um, I am not quite letting the, so on an alto, it's G, F, G, F, D, if you want to be trying this at home, and then does the same again, G, F, G, F, C. So G, F, G, F, D, G, F, G, F, C. The Fs aren't really existing. It's like, it's like I'm not letting the air come through that. So I'm going, I'm sort of going, <laughs> hopefully you might even see a little bit of movement in my diaphragm. Yeah, you can hear that the F doesn't really exist. I'm not even putting the key down the whole way. I'm just literally touching it so that it doesn't actually close the whole way. Let me try to show you the difference between the two. That's putting the F down the whole way, blowing throughout. If I take that air away a little bit and don't quite put the F the whole way down, this is when you get your ghost note. Just compare the two once more. Or, kind of cool. It's a cool little effect. Let's move on to number two. Numero de. All right, number two. Oh yeah, this is a nice easy one. So this sounds a lot more impressive than it is. So the ghost note thing that we talked about before, takes a little bit of practice, takes a lot of um, control in your technique. This one, however, dead easy. Okay, so that little whoa in there, cool effect. I'm just gonna call it a twiddle. It probably has a better name than that, but I'm gonna call it a twiddle. So easy. So basically, on the F, I'm going above the note, so that's to the G, back to the F, and carrying on with my phrase. That's all there is to it. Literally adding a G instead of, instead of going, um, that's plain. So G, F, D, F, D, C, D, F, D, C, D. Those long Fs, 
just literally adding a cheeky G in beforehand. So I'm gonna come up to the camera a bit closer now, hopefully it will focus in all right, so you can see this happening. So, uh, hopefully I'm in shot. So here's playing. And here's with my little twiddle. So you can see, I'm not even really lifting the key the whole way. I'm just touching it up a little bit. I'll just do that from the side. Here we go. So that's a little twiddle there. It's a cute little effect, useful one, and dead easy. You'll get that one straight away. So you definitely use it. Use it sparingly. All of these effects, try and use sparingly. Okay. Yeah, let's talk about, um, let's talk about bending. Okay. Uh, when I went into that B section, I used actually two effects at the same time, so we'll talk about each of them separately. I used bending. Okay, so, bending a note. Instead of just going, da, you go, <laughs> um, And it's a tricky one. I've actually done a video on this, so I'm just going to talk very briefly about how it works, and then above my head will be a pointer to that video, so you can go into a little bit more depth there. Uh, basically, all that you're doing is lowering your pitch via your throat. Um, again, I think I would cross-reference that video and have a little look at that to get that effect in there. But I'll just show you where I used it. There. That's a really good effect to use. And then alongside that, what are we on now? Number four? We're on number four already. Number four growling. So I use the bend and the growl at the same time, but you could use one or the other, it depends on what you're doing, what tune you're applying these to, but um, a growl in the right place, again, sparingly, can be a really cool effect. So that's your uh, nasty sound. Uh, <laughs> that takes a little practice. Some people get it straight away, and those people I find very frustrating, actually, because it took me a while to get. But it's a coordination thing, so, you know, some people pick up that whole kind of patting your head, rubbing your tummy thing. Some people can do that really quickly, some people can't, it takes ages. Some people can do this, and some people can't. It's a coordination thing, you might never be able to do it, but it's a cool effect and it's worth trying, and it's worth trying for a few months even. Just try a little bit every day. It should be popping above my head now, how to do a growl. But basically, in a nutshell, it's kind of singing and playing at the same time. You hum down the saxophone whilst blowing, which, if I'm not playing, essentially, it comes out like a bit of a monkey noise, like, Ooh. <laughs> That's kind of what's happening down the saxophone. Cross-reference that video to go in a bit more depth if that's something that you'd like to be able to do. I'm going to do one more tip that's going to take your playing to another level and hopefully make you sound a little bit more pro. So my fifth tip is a fall. Um, again, I'm not sure that's the technical term, but it's a chess term. That's when you kind of sigh through a note. It's at the end of a phrase. Uh, you see my shoulders doing it. I'm helping myself. I'm just encouraging there. Um, so that's when you kind of take the air away, like sighing, Ugh. it's like you take the air away, you take the diaphragm away, but your fingers still fall, and it gives you this sort of Ugh, at the end, which is quite a cool effect. Can you hear it? Oh. So practice it just on notes, so that's on an A. You might want to just uh, try without the fingers first of all, again, coordination. Just try uh, controlling the notes so that your air disappears and your diaphragm support disappears, um, but without the note splitting. So, then add the fingers, which will give it a little bit more oomph and make it go a little bit further and longer for you. So you've got a few effects in there. Um, in fact, I might play it once more just to finish off. See if you can spot those five effects. Uh, and I'll put a list of them next to me, uh, hopefully, on the screen, so that you can remind yourself what you're looking out for. So here's the tune one more time. Videos 
and you'd like some more kind of quick tips on how to just change your sound if you're starting to get frustrated, like why don't I sound more like this player or whatever, do leave me a comment. I do read them all and they are very important to me. It means a lot to me when you leave me a comment or give me a thumbs up. It makes me want to do more of these videos. So do get in touch. And yeah, I hope to see you very soon in the next video. If you're not already following me on social media, you might want to do that. So check out Ches Taylor Sachs. You can find me on Instagram, posting about where I am in the world and what I'm doing. You can find me on the Facebook and all of those kind of things. So do check me out on other platforms as well if you need a bit more Ches in your life. Who doesn't? Uh, <laughs> thanks so much for watching. Peace and love. See you soon. Bye. So I am serious about this subscribing thing. Hit the button. Do it. Do it or I'll drop you back. I will. I will. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll...